Hello and welcome to Flory Model Kit Review Time. Today we've got something from history. A little bit of an old school thing, a bit of a classic. We've got the Monogram 132nd Blue Thunder. What an iconic helicopter. If you were growing up like I did as a bit of a 70s kid, you'll know you had two options. You were either Airwolf, which to be honest, I was, or Blue Thunder. Unfortunately, here in the UK, we didn't get Blue Thunder, the TV show, like I think you did in the States. Um, over here, we just got the film and that was about it. Anyway, as you can see, Monogram did this kit back in the day. All right, so we got down in here, 30 second scale of Blue Thunder, you can see, and it's still sealed, although I can't say that for the contents, as you can probably hear as it goes round. If you can find it, your kit number for this one is zero, sorry, 6036. And we've got some more down in there as well. So we're saying this thing is uh, around about 34 centimetres long. So as you can see, again, I feel really, really guilty when I do this because it is actually still sealed. But we are going to have to have a bit of cut in here. All right. So big thank you to um, Chris, who, to be honest, has uh, broken his femur. So he's having a bit of metal work put in him, a bit of scaffolding. Um, but he sent me this kit after we've spoke about it on a show. Uh, back in the day, you can probably see the price up there. It used to be £4.25. Sorry, $4.25 even. All right, and we are greeted by... I say this is the first time I've seen him here as well, as you can tell. So I'm wondering what it's like in here as well. Anyway, there we go. Actually, it's not too bad. It, uh, I was more worried about the clear part, which is just loose, which is seems to be okay. So that was literally my worry. It might have a little bit of yellowing on, purely because of the age of the kit. But we are greeted by one still sealed bag. So a few bits have come off the sprues, as you can see down in here. All right. So what we do is we'll open that up in a minute. First of all, we want to see what we've got on the instructions. Okay, so as you see, a little bit of yellowing, <laughs> even though it's been in a sealed box. I don't know what date this is. I think it's 1984. All right. Anyway, as you can see, one pull-out sheet for this one as it goes right the way through. And again, it's not massively detailed, but you could use one of these kits. And because it's 30 second scale, you could go around and detail it up yourself if you wanted to. All right. So that's the nice thing with this kit. But basically, we've got the cockpit going down in here. We've got a little bit of seat detail. We've got all the padding and the side seats down in there as well. We've got the rotor head. Looks quite good. We've got a couple of bits down in here on the side with the clear parts going in rotor assembly no problem at all and then obviously all the other bits two halves coming together engine and then obviously the uh, whatever these things are supposed to be hanging off the side second set of engines i don't know uh, right down in there and then we've got various sensors and bits as well as the canopy on there just like that all right and then again round onto this side we've got the overhead panel going in glass work going in there's the old uh, detectors uh, for what is in whisper mode and all things like that. So we go, okay, we've got the gun being fitted to the front. All right, so those ones being fitted there, the little lights it's got as well, no problem at all. Same on the other side, got the belt for the ammunition going through to the gun, skids being fitted onto this, the tails, and then you even get the helmets as well for the, the uh, imaginary crew. So you can put the helmet somewhere on there as well. Deck will call out, as you might imagine, there is just a few little ones on there. Now, if you are of a certain age and you don't remember, Remember this it was basically a uh, police helicopter that they armed with four if i remember rightly bearing in mind i haven't seen the film for well seems like ever all right so what we'll do is we'll try and get this out of the bag and then what i will do after this is reseal it uh, in a fresh bag so there we go that's all the bits we're greeted by so the aircraft itself is actually designed off the back of a gazelle um, you know, if you took my, I don't know the best way to do this, this is a little bit because everything's off the spruce. All right, there we go. But basically, when you look at it like this, it's a gazelle from here back. And then they grafted on uh, like a box section onto the front of it. So under here is still the gazelle right the way through. All right. Generally, though, it's actually not too bad. Again, monogram, they were just light years ahead of everybody else. All right. So as you can see down in here, we've got that sort of textured, almost like a leather texture with the uh, sort of carbon fiber effect, which is probably well beyond before its day. But there we go. We've got that tail with the enclosed tail in there. And it, they are right. It does say on the box included metallic blue. Yeah, not the probably the best. I'll probably do this royal blue, but there we go. On the inside, you can see. But generally, it looks quite sharp. Luckily for us as well, when we put this down here, 
we've got no real warpage because that would be the issue as well with a very old kit and obviously if it's been upstairs downstairs in lofts or you know down in basements and things temperature can actually make plastic warp but that actually doesn't look too bad so we've got both sides of the fuselages just like that so that actually looks pretty good and again it's a good jump off point this kit right now what you look at uh Right, okay, so as you can see in sprue, we'll look at the parts separately, I think. But you can see we've got the cockpit down in here, and again, raised details, all the various stuff down in here. It's got some writing down at the back here. So, what have we got a date in here? 1984 for the mold. Very nice. We've got the overhead panel as well. So, we've got the bits down in there, and we've got the instrument panel as a reverse molded just down in here as well. So, you've got everything you could pretty much want with this one and again not sure about the plastic color but hey ho all right then over here we've got the gun which is crude to say the least but then the real thing was if you've seen the film you'll know what i mean all right and then we've got those engines we've got the helmet down in there two-part helmet and then we've got one of the the actual ammunition feeders and we've got a cyclic down in there anti torque pedals so yes not too bad and then down in here you have got all of these bits that have come off so again which i assume will go on there but generally not too bad we've got a rotor head with a very nice spar in there the rotors have got a little bit of natural sag in there as well so that's quite nice they're not big massive blades if you've ever been up to a gazelle you know it's tiny teeny tiny it's so light all right so again we've got the three blades which is absolutely fantastic and again the detail up here doesn't look too bad at all and then we've got one of the skids a little bit of a sink mark in each top part of the skid but hey ho well actually it's got a sink mark all the way through if we're being honest okay but again nothing that couldn't be fixed looks very good and then obviously we've got the other skid so that's all all right and then again we've got various parts that's sprue i think we've got the antennas all the other parts as you might imagine just down in here and again some of this is just bits of sprue i imagine but i'm going to keep it all just in case and we've got the other lumps and bumps down in here we've got the tails here's the seat so we've got the seat with a molded in little lap belt down in there as well and we've got the other seat so that's quite nice so again we've got everything you could pretty much want i think down in this one you know that's not a problem as i say it's just the sprues are sort of multi-part sprues and go through so the point is we've got this here which has got a tiny little bit of yellowing into it you can probably see it on the camera already if you look in the backs of it you can probably see it's got a little bit of a yellow hue but to be honest with you considering this has been kicking around as i say inside the box like that loose it's not scratched up to death like i thought it might be it's actually looking not bad at all unfortunately you can't open it unless you're going to raise a saw in here and then have it so you could open it up all right but generally looking very nice indeed even the smaller parts are all okay looks like we might have one missing here which i didn't see it in the box if we got one missing but it may be that there's nothing actually on there anyway but generally very nice so there we have it a blue thunder who would have thought again it's your only option as far as i know nobody else does a 30 second scale blue thunder do it in 48th because ashima do it to go along because obviously i've got airwolf um which i did many many years ago over 15 years ago now when it first got released so i did that particular one got that one actually from japan had it sent over so that's actually a really nice kit they do do it in 48 scale as well if you can get it it tends to be with ashima when they get sent over especially to europe the uk things like that is that that's it it's a one and done afterwards you never see it again so it's well worth grabbing one when you can again if you can do this one i think the beautiful thing about this is it's a great jump off point it's a large enough scale that you could do scratch building in here and the other nice part of this helicopter of course is the cockpit is completely glass it's huge so you could detail up all the inside of it if you wanted to you could do a lot of work around the engine and the great thing is as well there's plenty of references on the internet so if you go on the internet you can find out pretty much all the little detailed shots and that and in fact you can still go around and find the original one at one of the studios I don't know if it's universal studios or which one it is has one of the actual mock-ups from this that they use for groundwork and stuff like that 
that. So uh, yeah, interesting, very interesting. I'm going to build this because I like doing my classic ones. Classic monogram is probably one of my favourite classic manufacturers of kits to do. And this one, it's got a lot going for it. As I say, once you get it roughly together, you can go to it, detail it up and turn it into something really, really special. Anyway, thank you very much to Christopher for sending me this one over. Get well soon, mate. I know you're in the water at the moment. But again, much, much appreciated for anybody who sends me a kit uh, and things like that. I'm going to put this one together later on in the year. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, that was the Monogram 132nd scale Blue Thunder.